Okay, hello, hi guys. So once again, today's tutorial we're going to talk about Digetic UI. So what we're going to cover today is uh, what is exactly Digetic UI, some of the examples of Digetic UIs, and how to create them uh, in Digetic UI. Okay, so one of the methods is actually texturing, which is kind of like what you have done before in Blender. So we actually will not cover that, but we will cover more on uh, using Unity Canvas and setting it to a world space. Right, so what exactly is Digetic UI? Okay, so generally, Digetic means that uh, this UI is existent in the universe of the player characters. Okay, so kind of you have to think in terms of, you know, if you are the character inside the game, can you see that interface? Okay, so that's kind of like, uh, you have to think about it, uh, how to differentiate between Digetic and non-Digetic. Okay, so non-Digetic is kind of like opposite, whereby uh, the UI that you can see as a player in front of a computer, but not the character inside. The character inside the game cannot see that UI. Okay, that's the difference. Right, so some examples of a digetic UI. Okay, so like you can see in uh, all these games, right? Um, okay, so like you see like for the far right, right? You can see actually a game, uh, Halo. Okay, so basically you can see the gun with the number of like ammo left, okay? So if you are the person or the characters in the game holding that gun, you will be able to see the same number. I mean the number of ammo that is left on the gun, right? So basically it's not an on-screen UI. Rather, it's on the device, the weapon UI, right? On the center, right, it's a pit boy. So, uh, if you have played Fallout 4, right, you will probably be familiar with this device. <clears throat> so basically, it's a device that you wear on your arm, and you can see information of the game and stuff. Okay. So all these are also, if you are the character in the game, you will be the one wearing this device, and you will be the one that is able to see this uh, screen as well. Okay, so same goes for the other games as well. You, you know, if like in a game you have a watch and the character wearing the watch can see the watch, means that it's a digetic UI. Right. So some other example, like if you are happen to play VR games, right? So most of the time actually you're playing as the character inside the virtual environment. Therefore, most of the UI in the VR games right, are all digetic. Okay. So basically, uh, like all this hip up display, right? Like, you know, you're driving a plane and then you're interacting with all the, uh, you know, all the opponents and stuff, right? So basically this, for this game, you're you are actually playing as Iron Man. Ah. So all this UI, right, is like you're inside the helmet and you can see all this UI that's like on your helmet. Ah. Okay. And likewise for other like VR games, right? There's always like pop up and stuff, uh, whereby you can interact and stuff. Okay. So that's kind of like some example of targeting UIs. Right, so I mean, digetic UIs can be a mixture of uh, digetic and non-digetic. So um, let's take example like for the racing game, right? Oops, for the racing game, right? The dashboard you can see here are uh, actually your digetic UI because it's in the game, and the character that's driving the car will be able to see the dashboard, right? But for things like the total times, last time, the ranking, uh, which part of the laps are you in, and stuff, right? All these are something that the character in the game is not able to see. Okay, it's not like the driver turn back and can see, hey, I'm at the second lap, the second position. Okay, so that's kind of different between digetic and non-digetic. Okay, non-digetic are UIs that the characters in the game is not able to see. Only the person that is playing the game will be able to see. Okay, so generally these are the two areas. Likewise, flight sim, you have your cockpit, so you have like a lot of UIs, okay, that whereby you play as a pilot and these are all the UIs that you can get information from. Right, so up on to creating a UI. So creating the Gated UI uh, generally, right, in say Unity, right, we will use a canvas and we will set the canvas into world space. Okay, and you will see how this thing goes. Lah. So basically, we'll do a few of like all these decals and stuff whereby, you know, you can, uh, in your game, right, or in your levels, right, you can let the player know, okay, where to go and, you know, certain place and stuff so that your player doesn't get lost and such. Okay, so we'll take a look into how to create all this uh, in Unity. Okay, so for the decals, right, uh, I mean, we can quickly just go into a new canvas. Just file on to file on to will do. Right, so if let's say I want to do like kind of like a A long, like a A position, A bomb site and stuff, right, I can basically draw a circle in Photoshop and then just kind of like paint the character A and such. And then we export it as a, as a kind of like an image, then we we'll load it onto Unity. So in Photoshop, right, okay, I will zoom in. Then uh, actually you can choose brushes and it depends on what are the brushes that you have available to you. Okay, so kind of you can choose your brushes. 
for me, I'll just go with something sort of this, this brush. Then I will just pretty much draw a circle. Okay, you may want to create a few more layers to draw a few more circles and then choose the prettier one and stuff. Okay, but for demonstration sake, uh, I will just use the probably second one. And uh, maybe I will draw one more because there's a bit of clipping. Okay, now I'll create another la uh, layer to draw the A. Okay. Okay, likewise, I can create another layer, hide these two. Okay, and just draw a B for this. Brush. Okay, so kind of like this my A and B, lah, but depending on you, you may want to separate them into onto different layers. Lah. Okay, maybe different layers will be better so that you have more controls Okay, over what you want to. Uh, how, which circles or which alphabets that you want to use and stuff, that, or you can reuse them. Okay, with that done, right, I was going to disable this background and then I'm going to uh, press Control Shift, uh, Control Shift Alternate and then S, okay, to save as for web. I'm going to set as PNG, then I'm going to save this onto my desktop. Okay, likewise, uh, maybe let's save another one for point A. So Control Shift Alternate S, okay, to save as for web. Generally, the web saving right, is a much smaller file size. Okay, so after you have get your decal, if let's say you have something that you like from web or uh, from online as well, you can you know integrate it uh, But just make sure the background is transparent. So over here on Unity, right, I basically have a very plain level, not much here. So we're gonna try to put some decals on the wall. Okay, so what we can do is to right click and then create a UI, and maybe let's just say uh image. Okay. Mm, okay, but make sure if let's say you have existing canvas, right? You do not want the canvas to be inside. Uh. So let me just undo first. I will instead create a canvas. Okay. Then I will create it. Uh, okay, let's set up set up the canvas first. So in this canvas, I will set to world space. Okay, so world space basically your canvas is kind of have an X Y Z position. Let's set that to zero zero. Then maybe for height, I want say uh maybe thirty two. By thirty two. Okay. Right, so we can see now our canvas is still pretty big, but uh, let's adjust it later. Lah. Okay, let's create an image first. So image, okay. So this image probably I want the size to be 32 by 32 as well, or maybe even smaller. And we want to bring in our image onto our Unity project. Right, so remember to always set your this uh, image to sprite first. Okay, so then now we can actually drag our point A. Onto our, onto our image component or image game object. Okay, so after that we got this right. It's kind of big, so we're gonna like uh, scale it down, maybe 0.1. And now we can actually uh, position it. Okay, uh, for the canvas right, you also need to include the camera. So for this case, uh, our game camera is this guy, and we should be able to have kind of like a nice decal for our wall. Okay, so just take note of the Z fighting. So you kind of like want to put it a little bit forward. Okay, and it's still a little bit big, a little bit big. So I'm going to scale down uh, a tad smaller. Okay, so kind of I have a decal. So for more decal, right, you can actually duplicate this canvas. Okay, and then replace the image inside to the B image. Okay, so we're gonna replace the image inside. Right, so now you got A, B. Okay, so this is kind of how, how you load the image uh, into canvas. Lah. So likewise, uh, instead of images, right, you can also replace it with a text object, okay, so you can delete the image first, and right click on your canvas UI and uh, add a text. Okay, so for the text, 
Okay, so for the text, same thing. We want to make it like pretty small. Okay, press F to zoom in. Then we can kind of position it the same way as we had. Maybe you want to centralize it. And maybe make the canvas a little bit smaller. Okay. Then maybe you can type welcome. And you can change the color to maybe say red. Okay. Right, so likewise, we can also customize the font. So if let's say you find the text blurry and stuff, uh, what I normally do, I will downscale the canvas. Ah. Okay, then I will probably make my the text size back. Okay, so you may need to have some tweakings on and off. Lah. Okay, so probably I want to change my font. So again, we can also go to uh, like uh, previously we talked about is the da font, da font dot com, right? And you can download a font and you can bring it onto your project, and then replace the font face with the new font, right? Okay, so you can create simple decal whereby your uh you can kind of like give your player some hints. Uh, while inside the level, so that they will not get lost and stuff. Okay. Uh, another thing to take note since uh, we are on this topic of uh, adding textures, right? Uh, you can actually downsize your resolution of your assets. Okay, so you can see uh, when you click on the assets, then the images, right? The maximum size two zero four eight. But I mean, because if let's say it's a very small decal in the level, right? You can also actually reduce it to two zero two five six ah, or and or even smaller. Then click on apply. Okay, so what's happening is that actually your the size of your texture will be greatly greatly reduced. Okay, so like example, if let's say by default right, it was like two five six, and if you downrest the quality of the image right, okay, it will become sixty four. That's kind of like about a quarter. Oh, so but as you do, you also want to take note if the quality is too bad. Okay, so we can try to go lower, and you know eventually it will be a a, a line whereby you know it looks not sharp. And it won't be good enough. Okay, so you kind of have to balance the quality and the file size uh, as you go. Right, so that's kind of like how you create uh some decals over for your levels. Okay, I mean of course you can do interactive one whereby maybe tell a time or some sort. Yeah, but for our assignment needs, right, we won't need to do that. Okay, so it's kind of like to, for us to practice and differentiate between uh diagetic and non diagetic. Oh, if just in case you wonder all this like scoring and timer and stuff right all these are considered non diagetic why because this green guy won't be able to see the ui okay it's, it's not like it's turned backwards you can see the ui okay so those are kind of uh, i mean those are your non diagetic ui right so i think that's kind of about it for diagetic ui right so yeah good luck have fun create more decals for your games and make them look awesome yep thank you